We're here with LAFC2, new LAFC, newly minted LAFC2 head coach, Othoniel Gonzalez, but everyone calls you Junior. Junior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Got to be great to be back home here. LA is where you're from. Yeah, yeah, it's where I'm from. Um, originally from Southgate, and then we moved east, to Pomona, Montclair, and then ended up in Rancho Cucamonga, and then Empire. You've been away, you were at the Chicago Fire assistant coach there. You've had a, a tremendous coaching career. Just from the time that you were away seeing LAFC develop, what was your thoughts about this new club in, Los in your hometown growing and now the perception of seeing it firsthand as part of uh, the coaching staff? Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I went to a get together right when the club started and I, I saw John there and, and it was like a reunion for their Patty Adora's team, championship team. And I remember how excited he was when, when they started the club and I've been friends with Todd Sadania for a long time. He was a big part of the academy and. And uh, so I've always kept tabs on how the development of the academy and the first team have been going. And it's incredible with such a short period of time what they've been able to do, not just for the results wise, but the culture of soccer in Los Angeles, is, it's incredible. Which you know a lot of. Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, you told us about where you're from, you went to UCLA, you've coached in Southern California. What are the things about the culture as a soccer player, the soccer culture, someone who played, someone who's coached here, what are those elements that are important to you when you when you talk about L.A. soccer? Well, to me, there's so many unique backgrounds in Los Angeles. I mean, if you go all the way back to the greater L.A. soccer league, you've got a Croat team, you've got an Argentine team, you've got all European-based teams, African teams, Latin-based teams. For me, that was like the start of me understanding how important soccer is in, in L.A. Growing in the game in this, in this area has been huge for me. It's home. Um, and, uh, you know, I went to UC Riverside, was a head coach for a while there in the collegiate realm. Uh, I've coached, obviously, for the team down the street and then now with LAFC and, and this is home. So giving back to the players, being able to be a part of the, the development of the game in LA is, is why I decided to come back. Didn't hear UCLA won a natty there, correct? We did win a national championship, yeah, yeah. That was great. <laughs> Ziggy was our head coach and that was in a special place for me. He was a good mentor for me. and. Even Ante, that's on the first team staff, played there. A lot of other coaches uh, around the area in the MLS have, have played there. So that always has a, good, a special place in my heart, UCLA. Good platform for anyone to, to pursue this. And uh, you, you've already mentioned those contacts and the familiarity when you came to LAFC, knowing Ante. Aaron Long was a guy you coached as well at your time at Riverside. Uh, what was he like when you, because we've talked to him about his journey and how it was difficult and there was yeah. a lot of roadblocks. What was he like then now that you see him become the professional he is? Yeah, it was a unique story. My, the assistant coach at UC Riverside at the time, uh, Jimmy Norberg was his name. He was a director of coaching for Apple Valley Soccer Club and he was running a camp. So he asked me to come and help him with the camp and it was in the middle of not a, a, a lot of people. It was just one field in the high desert and there was a really special nine-year-old there that had excellent technique. That was the first time I saw Aaron, and I knew he was gonna be special. So we invited him down to the Arsenal Soccer Club, which is in the Altaloma Ranch Cucamonga area. Uh, I grew to get to know him. He thought he was a playmaker number 10. He never wanted to play defense at all. Uh, and I was able to offer him a scholarship at UC Riverside. He, he accepted it over some big schools, so I always thank him for that because he helped turn the program around and start getting some notoriety for the, for the program. Uh, we played him at defensive mid, and uh, he never wanted to get back and recover. I, it's incredible that I see him at a center back at this level. But then I uh, went to Chivas USA from, from UC Riverside, tried to convince the staff to, to, to draft him, and he was one of the last picks for Portland. Yeah. And then he goes to Seattle, and ironically, Chivas USA ends, and I get a job in Seattle, so we cross paths there. And he's been up from first team, second team, and he's had a, definitely a journey where he's had to earn it. Uh, and then when he went to Red Bull, it was really special for him in his development, right? He gets gold defender of the year in, in uh, USL, right? And for the second team with Red Bull, and then gets onto the first team, has an incredible year. And it's just really cool to come to the meal room and see him and see how long we've known each other. And we've both learned at the same time, you know, I was developing myself and my craft. And, to be in the same club is just really special. Oh, that's brilliant. I imagine that's a story that you could probably share with some young player and say, look at yeah. what Aaron Long did. Most definitely. I always use him as an example uh, in all the teams, especially in the second team environment where um, they're wanting, sometimes uh, it's important for them to know that the hard work and everything that it takes, professionalism um, and timing. Timing is so important too, you know, you, you never know who's watching.
early returns with the the group that you have. Uh, look, LAFC two is year one a season yeah. ago, so it's in diapers. And now yeah. in year two yeah. Yeah. to see, and you mentioned winning is a big part of it, and that I, that has to be something that uh, is attractive for players for their movement to the to the first team eventually as well. Yeah, I feel uh, if we're teaching the principles, I mean the. The first team staff, I've been here a month, and they've already brought me in and given me so much information. Steve is giving me the whole game model, teaching me what LAFC soccer is all about. And then, uh, you know, also staff members that are within our second team staff have been teaching in that same way. So I just needed to get up to speed quickly on what the principles are and the style of play, and then implement that within the group. And so far, uh, we've had a few games. We've had some success. Steve today, he just pulled me aside and said, I watched the game and this is what I see. And uh, he said, good job, because at least what he's seeing looks like what we saw versus Seattle. And for me, that's, uh, that's awesome to have that relationship with the head coach, where they're actually paying attention. So uh, I'm really happy how open it is here and how everyone's communicative and they just all want to help each other. So that's been a huge plus this, this past month. LAFC 2 in many ways has to mirror LAFC 1, as you, yeah. as you pointed out. But your philosophy as a coach, and aligning with that, but you being Junior Gonzalez as well and what you bring to the table, what are those important elements? Yeah, I've always been a pretty uh, a, a coach that likes to play through lines, a lot of build-up. Now we're playing through lines. I like to be able to have possession progression to, through the lines and, and obviously score a lot of goals, being an attacking-minded coach. A lot of similarities in the counter-press situations. Uh, that LAFC bring to the table and their net that they say, the, the vocabulary. The only difference I would say is my style of play with other teams is a little bit more expansive and not as direct to goal. So learning those cues and, and those actions with this group has also been good development for me because the modern game is getting more and more vertical. And so it's an opportunity for me to tweak some things that I've done. But uh, for me, it's not about me, it's about LAFC. In this position, it's about LAFC and how they see the game and how well can we get our players to implement those actions. Because at the end of the day, it's about them getting signed to the first team. Right. And what would that, what would that mean? Because it's going to happen. We've already seen it happen. We saw uh, uh, Nathan Ordaz, who was uh, amongst many others on LAFC yeah. to make a breakthrough. But what would it mean to you when you see these guys get that opportunity? And again, this is a priority for LAFC. LAFC 2 is there to help the first team and it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's a proud moment. I, I mean, uh, just in my last transition um, and having a little bit of time away from being on the sidelines, be, watching all the games with my son and my family and just keeping track on uh, all the teams because I didn't really know where we are gonna be next. Seeing ex-players on those teams and just having the joy to tell my son, hey, I coached that guy in the national team or with this club or with that club. And, and uh, it, for the second team coaches, it's not the only thing it's about is when those players say thank you. They send you a text, thank you coach for everything you've done, or they give you a jersey. That for me is everything. Uh, you know, now I'll be in the stands and not on the first team, you know, on the bench. I'll be in the stands with my family and I could say, you know what, I see what we trained this week and now he's getting an opportunity to do it with the first team. And, and that's a beautiful thing as a coach. I mean, just, just seeing them at that level is all you need.